Melissa, let's talk about the uh, superintendent search. I know sure. uh, January was the first mm-hmm. opportunity that you folks officially could actually yes. search for a superintendent. Yeah, so we actually have met twice over the course of the last, uh, this week and then last week, uh, where we were able to ask questions from Mm -hmm. the school board association, uh, the West Virginia School Board Association. And so we've actually been been grabbing a lot of info um, to to put together um, a good picture for us to make an informed decision. Uh, We will be uh, voting on whether or not we are going to be doing a search on uh, Monday night. So... Um, stay tuned. And and when you say that, do mm-hmm. you mean um, because you would just move the interim superintendent into, or how how would that work? So there's there's a possibility that that is an outcome. Okay. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> well, you're um, one member, uh, so, so I'm one. That. I'm one. One member, one vote. Um, I do um, know that. I have not had any conversation with uh, Mr. Stevens to find out if he even wants to remain in that position. He he might want to go back to what he was doing previously. I have no idea. So we'll see. If they if they were to choose an, mm-hmm. another superintendent, um, is there any qualities or, or qualifications you would be looking at to um, really you know guide your decision making yeah so i can absolutely tell you that there are there are many qualities and qualifications i can tell you that that right now because of the growth that we're seeing in the county that is something that that is high up on my list i mean we need to be able to navigate what that looks like there's been a lot of change COVID has introduced um a lot of issues or or maybe in some respects because of staffing i mean it's it's put a bigger um, microscope in that area where we were short, you know, we were becoming short before and now all of a sudden, you know, we're really short staffed now. Um, so this is, there's multi, it's a multifaceted thing, but I can absolutely tell you every single one of us as board members, um, uh, we have had conversations um, about how we would approach this um, during these couple of weeks. And we have also, uh, I know for myself, I have said that I would want community involvement, um, want their input. Mm-hmm. This is not just, you know, the five members superintendent, this is the entire county superintendent. So we would want county input. Um, and so look for that as an option, uh, an opportunity potentially if we were to vote yes for doing a search so that we can um we know what everybody is is thinking and there's going to be a lot of common threads you know someone who can um work with various groups of individuals um and then you know being able to navigate some of the political arenas that just come with the territory unfortunately i hate to say that but there is a political side to being a superintendent certainly which stinks so you don't have to throw this open for a mm-hmm. big public search for a new superintendent interview, 10 candidates or whatever. We don't have to. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought for, for certain positions that it had to be a big public thing. No, we actually, that was one of the things that we asked at the very beginning was, you know, is this something where we do or we don't do? I mean, this is, you know, can we or can we not? Like, mm-hmm. what is that? option so like i said the last two weeks we've been sitting down um with uh two individuals that have really given us a lot of their knowledge um to help us make a well-informed decision i don't i personally don't like making decisions that i'm not well informed on Uh, and there's lots of stuff that you know get thrown at a board and because this one is just such a heavy um, it's a big topic. One. Yeah, yeah. We just need to be able to to have a well informed decision made. Do you have any idea what the mood of the room is in terms of whether you'll throw it open or not? I, there has not been one person um, that has said absolutely what they are doing, with the exception of one, and I'm not going to speak for that individual. Okay. Um, I want to switch gears here, mm-hmm. and I want to talk about uh, teachers, students, uh, behavior special education sure. discipline that sort of thing but mm-hmm. i'm i'm going to come at this at a different angle than the way you probably think i'm going to come at it for you okay go okay? for it and the reason why i am is obviously we've had issues uh with abuse of students in the berkeley county school system mm-hmm. before you got on the board of education mm-hmm. but we've never talked about 
what the right of the teacher is to defend him or herself. Mm. Because I have a lot of, I'm a coach, so I have a lot of friends in teaching, and many yep. of them are in special education, mm -hmm. okay? And when you see the newspaper story about this teacher abused this student, it's easy to sit back and go, oh, that's horrible. And it is, mm -hmm. okay? Adults should not be striking children uh, in a classroom. However, when the discipline is also administered on the teacher for the teacher defending him or herself, or a bus aide or a bus driver from attack, mm -hmm. I have a problem with that because yeah. how do you get people to go into education, even special education, when you're dealing with students who are a challenge physically and emotionally? And this is a story that I heard. Special education student bit my arm and locked teeth into my arm. Couldn't get the child off. Mm -hmm. Had to grab the child by the hair, pull the child off. Yeah. Okay. Now we suspend the teacher or the aide for doing that. That should not, in my opinion, be a suspendable offense. You've got to be able to defend yourself. So that actually, I'll, I'll speak to that point. For that specific one, there's actually techniques you can do to get the child to release that is not pulling hair. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I did when I worked in the school system uh, in Washington County, Maryland, was I actually attended what's called crisis prevention intervention. And so in that program there are useful ways that you can defend and protect not only yourself but other students and not every teacher is going to be certified in that mm -hmm. so unfortunately what i would love is to have whatever program is implemented every single teacher has the ability to attend the class yes um and become certified in uh, right now, there is a conversation going on in our school system where we're looking to potentially replace the CPI piece um, with a different program called Ukuru. And I apologize if I'm not s pronouncing that correctly. Um, we had a presentation earlier in the school year um, from a group of individuals who are utilizing this different program and they have seen a decrease in uh, student behavior and um, that that would be viewed as aggressive mm -hmm. um, or combative. Um, so we're looking at different avenues because obviously if this isn't working, um, why keep doing the same thing over and over again? I mean, that's just, that's just gonna produce the same results. Um, I, can, I can tell you that um, I am saddened by the atmosphere that currently exists. So, and when I say that, I'm I'm talking about not just um, within the school system, but actually within our culture. There's there's this cultural move where if you go to defend yourself, you're the problem, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not just in the school system. It it's it's out outside of the realms of education and my argument has been if we continue to do the same thing that we're doing in the school system it's going to end up bleeding into the culture eventually because the students that are currently growing up in this system are going to become that's just going to be what they've seen what they understand what they know and that's what they're going to do um, so we've we have to be strategic in what we're doing um, but at the same time, you know, those students who are having an issue, we got to make sure that they're getting exactly what they need. And give, give me one second and I'll give you a small story. I, I was in a classroom and I was punched by a student uh, who was combative and uh, I, was, I had a concussion from that and um, nothing, there was no uh, repercussion for the student um which whether or not i agree with or disagree with uh, that's a debate for a different day mm -hmm. but what i can tell you is he watched his mom od the night before so what do you do with that child who has no idea how to handle that traumatic situation come into school and then we're supposed to sit there and tell tell the student you have to sit down and be and quiet yeah. yeah i mean it's hard so you've got this social emotional piece but then i throw in what about the social emotional pieces of those other students that are in the room and watching it yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. are we are we sacrificing the social emotional well-being of students who 
either don't behave that way or just are not in that same place for that particular day? Are we sacrificing their social emotional well-being to address this one particular student? So, I mean, there's there's so many different ways you can go at this. Um, what I can tell you is that we are doing currently doing a, a principal survey. It's um, each principal is has the ability to to provide answers to questions um, that the board of education um, came together and and agreed to ask the the principals. And it, it's anonymous because we didn't want any repercussions to to happen for any particular principal. Unfortunately, we're in a day and age where sometimes. Um, if one person answers truthfully, mm -hmm. there could be repercussions. So we wanted to make sure that they had the ability to 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 not, you know, uh, have that repercussion against well, them. I appreciate your answers on that, especially since you've been in the middle of it yourself mm -hmm. with, yeah. the, with mm -hmm. a good example of, uh, the, I think, about three sides of that story, too, because it's exactly. yours, the students, and the students around the child Correct. who hit you. Yeah, being able to understand the situation from mm -hmm. being – in that situation, I think uh, definitely provides a much needed perspective. Now with uh, the CPI, is it just, is it other shortfalls in the program? Is it things that it's not covering? So for example, I know that uh, some of the healthcare plans um, from people that I've spoke with at the Ark of Washington, which deals with you know um, a wide range of behavioral issues in children. Yeah. Um, one of the issues is um, they, they or challenges, I should say, not issues. Um, is uh, the program that they have that incorporates nonverbal autistic children mm -hmm. and being able to communicate with them, you know, and they're not able to, you know, be able to give that verbal stimuli. And so a lot of the times they lash out or they have, you know, certain behavioral uh, right. um, trends that, you know, they, they try to work to, you know, get past the CPI or, or what's being implemented currently. Is it just not covering enough of the, uh, behaviors or is it more or less that you know it just needs an entire upgrade on the system because it's not suited for today's uh, health education that is a multi <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that is there's okay so there's so many different perspectives when you're talking about that so if you're talking about a, a student who is autistic mm -hmm. my and this is a personal opinion of mine, not necessarily a board opinion, not, um, and I have no idea if any of the other board members um, feel this way, if, or believe this, um, if you are talking about an autistic child or an autistic classroom, that garners a different set of um, skills, skill mm -hmm. sets um, by the individuals who are in that classroom versus one who is in a behavioral uh, difficult uh, classroom. They're, they're two different, they're two vastly different um, arenas. And from a behavioral perspective, CPI is not working. Mm -hmm. um, at least to the best of our ability. In some cases it does um, in I don't think that it's working the way that we want it to work. Okay. Can I add this real quickly? Uh, because it's an example of sure. what you're saying here. Uh -huh. Rick Manning on our Facebook page said, my daughter is a special needs teacher in Hardy County. This year, she has come home with teeth marks, mm -hmm. black eye, swollen yep. nose, fat lip, constant bruises on arms and legs. She's trained in all phases and restraining, but still a very physical job. Mm -hmm. And she's at the elementary level, not yeah. even at the middle school or high school level. Yeah, I was in the elementary level. The student that hit me was a fourth grader. Mm -hmm. uh, bigger than a typical fourth grader, but fourth grader. Um, that same fourth grader was able to, to you know, kick through glass. That same fourth grader flipped a desk and broke the desk. Um, I, this is a hard piece where you've got an epidemic of um, drug abuse mm -hmm. in our society. You've got people who um, are, there's instability in the home, whether that's just, you know, they lost their job. They can't help it. They lost their job and they're trying to find, you know, another one that actually pays the bills. Uh, and then there's the homelessness piece that goes with that. So, I mean, you've got, you've got kids that are homeless. You have um, kids that, that are in a, maybe abusive homes themselves and we just don't know it yet. 
Um, there's so many different pieces to these puzzles. My, my question for his daughter is, how are you? Because it's traumatic, not just for the other students, but it's also traumatic for the, the individuals who are grown adults and can rationalize. We can rationalize that this student, you know, maybe watched their, their parent overdose the night before or, you know, whatever that situation might be. We can rationalize that there's, there's anger there that he doesn't know how to direct. Mm -hmm. However that child can't but then we can't help that we can't help the child the way that we absolutely need to one of the things we talked about before we came on the air was mm -hmm. just the whole staffing issue so absolutely. um so couple all of this in a lot of cases i would guess of teachers who aren't certified in dealing with special education mm -hmm. or anything or math or science or what have you but I always, it, it seems to be not a bigger concern, but certainly a high level concern if you put, I mean, there's always been a staffing issue at the special ed level, if I'm not mistaken, but now it's sort of exacerbated by all the other things that are going on. And then, then you have, you know, society um, mm -hmm. sort of uh, coming in with the situation. So um do you believe that that teachers who aren't certified are getting the adequate training to be in those classrooms um to deal with these types of situations i would hope so okay i'm not i'm not in that position okay. to know whether and we don't which, know how what the numbers are or anything so like. i'm not in the position to to necessarily know which specific teacher has the certification and sure. which does not what i can tell you is at our last lsic um, meeting that we had at Hedgesville where we got an idea of what how Hedgesville uh, district is is doing um, we got an idea that there's some people that are working in our classrooms that are not certified um, we got an idea of um, the training that that needs to be uh, revamped and we're working on that but unfortunately <laughs> this is one of those multifaceted pieces we just, we just need can't, bodies sometimes we just need bodies at times but at the same time that's why we, alonso <laughs> needs to go into the classroom oh, no, no. hey now look <laughs> alonso's response was oh no his, <laughs> history After teacher this, right there history yeah, there teacher you go. There history you go. teacher um no i mean it, it's just one of those situations where i mean they're oh, golly we can make a decision at at the board level but then by the time we can approve for the the uh, let's go for instance the ukuru we it if we were to approve the program then there's the setting up the trainings then there's the sure. you know certifications and then you can't include every single teacher from every single school from you know throughout the entire county in one class boy i would love that i wish that that was a possibility how can we multiply all that can we try and figure it out i don't i we can't um it's just a, it's inconceivable and then you got to wait for the day that they actually have a a day that they can do that training where they're not being taken from their classroom. So right now there's several training days on the books where teachers are going to have to be removed from the classroom to do the training. So then we need a substitute or someone else that's going to be in that sure. classroom. So I many it's just it's it's a monumental task and then, you know, it's hard when you when you see some individuals who don't know all of the issues they they look at you and go we'll figure it out and it's like i i would love to i'd love to wave a magic wand and be able to say i've got all the answers but i don't and neither do do um a lot of individuals we're trying to figure this out as we go sometimes and this is this is the hard part because we don't know what eucharist looks like it it's it's a viable program we're looking at doing the training long term two years down the road do i know what that looks like no and do you know if those teachers who are trained now are going to even be in here be here in two I years hope. because i you hope know, they throw up their hands and say i didn't sign up for this you know there's a lot of that there's mm -hmm. a lot of i didn't sign up for this and there's a lot of i you know i commend students who are in the high school and they are wanting to be a teacher i commend them 
um, because they're they've got a front row seat to what the current atmosphere is mm -hmm. um, and I can absolutely tell you that that uh, classrooms should absolutely absolutely be a safe place for everybody not only for the students but also for the teachers your next meeting is Monday at Musselman High School correct yes that's at five o'clock in the auditorium yes we are going to be going over the LSIC uh, reports uh, from all of the Musselman area schools so anything else on the agenda of particular note we're going to be voting on whether or not we're going to do a search that's a big one yeah. the superintendent yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. do you Those know do you ones. know how you will vote at this time yes I do are you willing to tell us? Not at all. I don't blame you. I'm I wouldn't gonna, if I was you. Look, here's the deal. Uh, anybody uh, who asks me or pressures me into telling them how I'm going to vote uh, before a meeting, nope, not going to tell you. Yeah, I wouldn't either. But I have to ask. Well, you can and, ask. Right. Absolutely. And I don't blame you. And you things speak. could change within the confines of a meeting. You go in thinking you're going to do one thing. I've sat on enough boards and commissions mm -hmm. and sort of have my mind made up. And then I go in and listen to arguments and discussions. And absolutely. you're just like, wow, I didn't even think about that. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to vote. Um, not the way I thought it was going to be. That actually happened recently. Mm -hmm. we, we had we had an issue that came before the board, and I sat there and listened. I was going to vote one way, and I sat and listened, and I asked some questions, and then I voted a different way. There you go. Um, so it, it happens. Our, you have a final question, Alonzo? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Got to be there, a quick answer, though. <laughs> have, has any teachers brought to you any uh, questions about PEIA or any of the reforms that are happening at the state legislative level? I can tell you that it's not questions, comments. Mm, okay. And Fix they're, it, right? Fix it. Fix it and what in the H double hockey sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the Board so. of Education can't fix it. It's not up to you. Right. It's not up to us. For hey, sure. Melissa, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, you coming Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.